Los Angeles International Airport. Hughes Air West Flight 706 prepares for takeoff. There are 44 passengers on board. The flight is traveling from Los Angeles to Seattle with several intermediate stops. Welcome aboard, folks. We'll be getting underway any minute now. Former Air Force pilot Captain Theodore Nikolai is in command today. He has amassed more than 15,000 flight hours. Air West 706 red, cleared for takeoff, runway 24 left. Climb via heading 250. Roger, 24 left, climb heading 250. First Officer Price Brunner has even more hours in the air than Captain Nikolai. Weather's looking clear all the way to Seattle. Throttles are all yours. 80 knots. At 6.02 p.m., the DC-9 lifts off from LAX. Turn right, heading 060. Air West 706 red, right 060. The heading takes the plane west over the Pacific Ocean before turning northeast towards its first stop, Salt Lake City. Four minutes after takeoff, First Officer Brunner contacts a different control center north of LA. Los Angeles Center, good evening. Air West 706 Red, turn left, heading 040 until receiving Dagon. The controllers guide the DC-9 out of Los Angeles. In addition to Air West, uh, the radar controller may have been talking to five or six other jets climbing out towards the northeast, uh, in addition to a small number of crisscrossers back and forth through the airspace. Suddenly, an emergency alarm warns the controllers that a plane in their airspace may be in trouble. At this point, we look back where Air West 706 is, the target's missing. The radar controller said something like, Use Air West 706, reset your transponder. Radar contact lost. There's no answer. Air West 706. Radio check, how do you hear me? No answer. This is getting bad now. We've lost a target, and we've got no communications with the aircraft. Moments later, the crew of a nearby military plane calls in devastating news. Center, we've just seen an explosion on the side of a mountain. The DC-9, with 49 people on board, has slammed into the California hills. Did Air West just explode? It had crashed for some reason, and we had no idea whatsoever. The National Transportation Safety Board assigns one of its top investigators to the case. Yeah, got it. Great, thank you. Bye. Second World War Navy pilot Dick Baker. San Gabriel Mountains. The crash site is in a remote area of the San Gabriel Mountains, a few miles from the town of Duarte, California. In the hours after the crash, witnesses come forward insisting they saw a mid-air collision between the DC-9 and a fighter jet. Investigators are stunned. How did a fighter jet and a passenger plane end up on a collision course? Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. A call from a nearby Marine Corps base provides a key detail. El Toro's missing a jet. An F-4 Phantom hasn't made it back to nearby El Toro Marine Corps Air Base. It's the military's most advanced fighter, capable of outmaneuvering almost everything else in the sky. In the 70s, there was lots of military training going on in Southern California because there were clear skies and lots of desert out there that they could train over. Investigators learned the identities of the F-4's two crewmen, Marine pilot James Richard Phillips, and radar intercept officer Christopher Sheese. Watch him! Remarkably, after the impact, Lieutenant Sheese was able to eject from the doomed fighter, 